Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome to the Funk Chronicles. I'm your host, Dr. Turk Logan from Logan Communications and the Funk Museum Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. What time is it? <laughs> With me today on the line, I have Mr. Jerome Benton from Los Angeles, California with the group time. How you doing, Jerome? Group the time, but. <laughs> the time. Yeah, we, hey, yeah, hey, get me straight, the time. How you no, doing, I, man? No, it's, it's, you know that's just that's just something that has always happened since um, day one. You know, um, our, our old soul brothers—they always uh, just drop the the on there and put tag. <laughs> well, you know that's that's an old radio slogan, but that's okay. Well, if what it is is what it is, the time. Uh, oh, I, I don't have a I don't have a problem with that. Tell me about uh, the time and what you guys have been doing so far uh, lately. We haven't heard from you lately. Well, I've been working on some uh, independent stuff, doing some some playwriting, some script writing, and um, uh, just doing a little independent journey right now. So, um, haven't been touring with the band for for a number of years, but you know we're in the in the talks of of doing something, um, putting something together to uh, to build me and Morris's brand. Okay, um, okay. And how's Morris doing? Is he, are you guys, how, how's he doing? I haven't heard from him lately, but I always had a lot of love and respect for him because he was such a talented guy, or is such a talented guy. Morris is doing well. You know, he's touring. He's got um, dates scattered off throughout the country. Um, he's doing the, the festivals. Um, you should be able to check it out online where, you know, you can find out where he's at. He might be in your town anytime soon. Well, we'll keep, we'll keep, our, <laughs> keep our eyes and ears open just to make sure so we can follow up on that. Give me the Times history. Where did you, the time, where did you guys start at? Well, the time started in Minneapolis with a number of different uh, entities. Um, uh, Prince and Morris were, were in a group with Andre Simone, uh, Terry, uh, Terry Jellyby and Monty was in a group together called Flight Time. Uh, Jimmy Jam was in a group, and this is at younger ages, um, uh, Mind and Matter, and um, uh, uh, Jesse. Jesse came to Minneapolis from Rock Island, Illinois, and um, through the, the development of the group, you know, Prince um, Prince came to Terry with Morris, and they they created this uh, this real cool entity. Um, you know, the flavor was in the guys that are in the band, and um, uh, Morris and Prince had a, a idea of what they wanted, and we embellished on it. Um, I wasn't in the group as a musician. I was um, I was around and and helping things move along and move forward. Okay. And, uh, eventually became a, uh, a, a, a one of the personnel in the in the group and um, you know 35 years later here I am doing what I'm doing that's right oh. 35 years trust me I understand um, so when you joined the group as a musician what role what did you play what did I do a singer a musician what did you play well I I'm, my role at first was a roadie I was a roadie okay um, um, just running around, making sure everything was right, wrapping cords um, with all the uh, the the road savvy uh, road roadian technicians that were on the road. Some of our um, staff and crew came from the big tours, the the Parliament tours. They came from the Kiss tours, and um, Farnoli had hired those production companies to take place. And I was just immersed into that business, and I was out on the road with these guys and. Um, through a number of events, um, you know, I like playing around just as I do now for what people see me doing. I, I carried that character through some of the rehearsals and um, the song Cool said somebody bring me a mirror and this particular place that we had for rehearsal in Minneapolis was called the Yasm. And this gentleman, he collected mirrors and statuettes and he liked to paint them and paint them gold and uh, just really very ornate type of uh, uh, plasterings. And I grabbed the mirror off the wall and 
took put it in front of Morris at the part in the song where he said, somebody bring me a mirror. That was you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you know, that gimmick, that gimmick was so popular to the, to the group because the uh, theatrics that the time brought on stage beside the music was something that I know the audience always look for. Is that correct? Absolutely, you know, it's a, it's a whole energy. It's a, um, what we always told, um, related to is a lifestyle, you know. We lived it. We, we lived fun. We lived cool. We lived wild and loose. We, we, you know, but we always respected ourselves and the music. So, you know, we, we worked hard at it. We rehearsed all the time. And um, the outcome was what it is, you know. And to this day, take it to the stage. You've got a problem with it. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, I still clearly remember because Prince brought one thing to the stage, you know, as a talented, one of the most talented musicians of our time. But then oh. when you guys came on stage, you brought something different and it was just such a transition. You know, we're all from that same neighborhood. We all grew up in North Minneapolis, North and South Minneapolis. And... Um, we dared to dream, we dared to pursue, we dared to per persevere, we, we dared to commit ourselves to it. And, and working together with commitment, that's what the outcome was, was the success that we had. Well, you guys were a unit as well. You, you know, most, how many members were in the band at the time? Well, originally it was six members. Okay. Six members. Uh, and, Terry, and Jimmy, like I said, they, they were um, part of a group called Flight Time, which, you know, had an array of people in it. You know, Alexander was in Flight Time. Um, Rocky Robbins had sung in Flight Time um, for a guest appearance. Uh, Cynthia Johnson that sang I Want to Take You to Funky Town was in um, um, Flight Time. Uh, there's an actor on, on television. He's been been very successful in his acting career, Greg Robertson, who okay. was in Flight Time. You know, the, Minneapolis had a, 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 a very large palette of, of, of talent that, that, like I said, you know, commitment and perseverance and, and, and respect for what they was being done was, you know, the outcome was, was success. How was radio, how did radio receive the time back in the 70s and 80s? Oh, wow. You know, people like yourself, um, you guys opened your arms to us. You know, we, we came with, you know, first we were approachable. We were approachable as a group, as individuals, as males, black males, recognizable black males. Um, uh, when we would come into the city, you know, Billy Sparks, who was our promoter, Quentin Perry, uh, um, we come into your town and we come nestle up next to you guys. And, and we made a, we, we, we approached a familiarity and, and just conversation and, and just hanging out and wanting to go to the club. Uh, you know, we'd come to, let's say, we'll come to your, your town. What's the worst club in um, Ohio? Well, there was, there was a club that's no longer around called the Swats Club. It was about big as your, your living room. But that's where everybody, and, that's where everybody ended up. And, and, and people would come to us and say, we say, where, where can we go party tonight? And they'd be like, oh, don't go to the Swatch Club. We'd be like, <laughs> okay, that's where we're going. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, we had Don King and Mike Tyson in several years ago when I worked at Central State. And the first thing Don King says, do not take me to no elite nightclub. Take me to the, the raunchiest nightclub that you could find. And not that Swats was raunchy because the food was excellent. It was just so daggone and, small. And, and you, what? Go ahead. And you, know, and you know what that was? You know, by us going up in there and nestling up to, you know, the pretty girls, the, the big girls, the brothers and all that stuff, they were interested in what we had to say. And, 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 and so, they bought your music. That was your audience. And they, and they bought our music. They didn't download it for free. But, uh, yeah, well, you know, and, and, and uh, we do know how that works. I mean, I have. And, 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 and we would, you know, we would do two and three concerts in a city. And those people would come and they would repeat, repeatedly come. And we would make a round trip. We'd come back to that town probably three months, three, three four, five weeks later. And those same people. And we would go to the Swatch. Well, you know, the good thing about what you would say about the time is that when you mentioned download for free, even before download for free, you know, many of the artists 
uh, from 10, 15 years ago sampled a lot of your music. And mm -hmm. that was almost just as bad as downloading because when you guys came on stage, you were original musicians and you played original songs, correct? That's because um, in, in, in the growth of, 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 of getting an education, music class and music instruction in school was mandatory. That's right. And, and you had to take a certain amount of courses in music to graduate. This was high that, school. This was high school, yeah, right? High school. They, they even, cooking was necessary. Sewing was necessary. Auto mechanics. Lamp making was, was necessary. But um, now none of that stuff is necessary. I guess everybody got their head down on the iPad or in the iPhone or in Samsung. And, you know, you're not learning anything there. You're finding, you're finding out something. You're not learning nothing. <laughs> well, well, trust me, I taught at a university for 18 years, and the first thing I had to do was take the phones away from the students when they walked. They would be sitting right next to each other, talking to each other through the texting back and forth. And it was just such a distraction for the class because of that technology. So, yeah, I, I, I've seen it change from where well, it was when you guys started to where it is today. Well, you know, Mr. Logan, you know, even in high school, you know, the calculator came in. And they were banned. They were banned in our classes. That's amazing. We, Go ahead. We, they, we could not type papers. They made us write papers. We do all the, all the homework and stuff and typing and all that stuff, but we had to write our papers. Well, like I said, you know, it was the technology is good in so many ways and it's bad in so many ways because one of the things that I have a serious problem with is people texting and driving because if you're talking on your cell phone while you're driving you have your cell phone in your ear and you're looking straight forward but if you're texting and driving you have to look down and at the split second you can have a serious accident so well, this, this woman just almost ran me off the road that delayed this uh, this interview right now you know I was mad I wanted to follow her to her house and cut yep. her out yeah see that's but what I, I'm saying I, that's where that road like rage that. comes in yeah. yeah. So, you know, so it, there's but, some there's but, some value there and then there's some some not non value. Yeah. Te technology is great, but it makes people lazy. Right. And, and you know, um, I hopefully hopefully people will start understanding that, you know, music is getting lazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that transition that, 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 that we're going through right now, we do go through transmission, transition. We went from, you know, R&B to soul to uh, urban to hip hop to uh, rap to uh, gangster rap and, 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 and no telling what's going to happen tomorrow with the music. I, I respect the fact that music changes, but it's what it changes to sometimes. Yeah, I love it all. You know, growing up in Minneapolis, we didn't have black radio. We had one station, and that station was predicated on being on the air between the hours of 12 and probably between 2.30 and 2.47. When the, when the sun changed, that's when it went out because it was a solar station. Okay. Well, and you know, there's a station here in Dayton that's an AM station that's on the AM dial, and they shared the frequency with the station in Philadelphia. And so right. when that station here in Dayton was off the air, the station in Philadelphia was on the air. They had, and, it, and it's like that today. There's an AM station, sun up to sun down, and that may be what you are alluding to back, you know, 35, 40 years ago because FM wasn't popular then as it is no. today. And, and now it's Internet. You know, internet yeah. radio stations are popping up everywhere, and so that technology has changed as well. Yep, and Mr. Logan, we had we had an FM station, but by us being that, in that little hole, and, and the station was located in the projects. Hmm. That's out of a little room, out of a little room in the projects, and we had the coolest DJ there. His name is Kyle Ray, the super DJ, and Pharaoh Black, and um, a couple of people that were, you know, they were they were cool for us in the in the neighborhood, and they just they provided the flavor. And you know, other than that radio station, when that sun was down, we had to listen to the AM station. We had to listen to 
fog hat. We had to listen to Carly Simon and uh, Gordon Lightfoot. The Edmund Fitzgerald Superior, right. they say never give up the dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and that's been part of our, our history as it relates to the music business because I was just telling one of the producers when I started in my, before my broadcasting school, my instructor in school was country and western disc jockey in Dayton, Ohio. And so right. when we played the music, we played country and western. And, and if we didn't like music. it, we didn't have a choice. We had to play what the, what the instructor gave us to play. And mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I understand very clearly. We are in the process of building a funk museum, exhibition center, and hall of fame here in yeah, Dayton, yes. Ohio. And yeah, yeah. give me your take on that. I think it's deserved. I think it's well deserved. Um, I think we should um, recognize it all across the country and do what we can, whether it be a, uh, a museum or um, soulful events throughout the summer and the spring, you know, spread it out. Something that we all can, you know, really continue to treasure. You know, uh, let's not forget about the funk. The funk is for real. You know, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of interpretations of the funk, but you know, when you hear the funk, you know the funk. You That's know? exactly right. That's exactly just, right. Just because you can slap a bass around and do that stuff, you know, if it ain't got that groove That's right. on the funk, you know, if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, listen to George Clinton. Hey. <laughs> listen, to, listen to the Gap Band. <laughs> hey man, one one of the early members of the funk was a guy by the name of Junie Morrison. Junie Morrison from Ooh, Dayton, from Dayton, Dayton, Ohio. Ohio, yes, sir. And he I'm had here. a song out called Pain. Mm -hmm. and, and I was one of the first to play it, and I was one of the first to hear it uh, from a radio standpoint. Man, we talking about a, a piece of legendary funk that's still being played today. That was before the Ohio players came out with Fire and Sweet Sticky Thing and Roger came out with oh, More Bounce to oh, the I, Ounce, all oh, those man. funky songs. Speaking, speaking of Roger, shoot, we were on tour. Roger won our first tour. And Roger made it hard. Made it hard for some little young, little arrogant, cool brothers to be out there on the road. But we had ours. We, we got ours. You can't, you can't <laughs> your way. And, 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 you know, I, I can understand that because it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a business. It's called show business. And even though you guys are great entertainers, when you hit that stage, you got to take care of business. And I, know, I knew Roger personally from the time he was six years old up to the time he passed away. And I know he was a super musician. Roger was a great dude on the road. His brothers were cool. You know, we, we all had our spits and spats and stuff, but it was like family out there. When you're touring up and down the road, man, for eight months and you're living with each other, you know, he taught us some lessons. He taught us some lessons, and we, we gave some lessons as well. And, you know, we were out there with Prince, so it's two different ideologies of how to pray. Prince was playing uh, pop funk, and we was playing our style of funk and and roger was playing zap funk and you know but those are all all of those those entities will be remembered forever forever as being funky groups and and well-oiled machines and the music still being played today as yeah. 30 35 40 years later so it just shows and even though you didn't know it at the time because it's been so long ago but it just shows that you guys stood pun on words the test of time and, oh, and you know you're right we didn't know we didn't know what we where we were going to be in history but i guess we're in it thank god <laughs> hey and it's great to look back over it and still be around 40 years later and said you know we did this this is our contribution to the music business because you know our young people, and there's an educational piece in the Funk Museum as well that deals mm -hmm. with music, and I want your comments on that. You know, our, our kids and our grandkids, they need to know the contribution that you guys made to the music business. Yes, they, I think, I think we, we owe it to continue to try to keep, um, um, lack of better terms, funk alive. We, we, gotta, we gotta set up these, these these communities to to teach kids how to play it. Um, we got to figure out how to um, dust off dust off the records and and 
and pull some of that stuff up and put it on MP3 so these kids can hear it. You know, it's, it's interesting. You know, my son, I have a 24-year-old son, um, and he's been around a lot of music, a lot of music. But I still can get him. I can pull up some new birth. I can pull up, you know, that Faisal and tell him that, you know, Keith Harrison played with the time for a second um, out on the road and all that stuff, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, but we, we got to figure out how to get to these knuckleheads <laughs> and, and let them try to decipher how to, to capture that once again. Well, music is therapeutic and they say history repeats itself. And that's a major part of history, a major good part of history. And hopefully within your lifetime and my lifetime, we'll get a chance to see it come back around so the young people can start to absorb some of the things that, you know, you mentioned Keith Harrison. Uh, I talked to Keith Harrison today, as a matter of fact. He's at a college talking about the music business as we speak. Um, One Wonderful guy, amazing musician. Amazing, amazing musician. musician. For now, trust me, I know I, I, I broke Fazo riding high here in Dayton, Ohio. So, you, you know. You broke one then, dog, because hey you, broke, you hey. broke that one. And still, <laughs> and still play it on my radio station today, some 40 years later. You know, I emceed their shows in the small clubs in Dayton, Ohio, and it was just an honor and a pleasure being on stage with Fazo. So, you know, we you have know, a history I together. When I, when I go outside and jump into my $325,000 Bentley, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. That's all right. If you got it like that, you got it like that. Um, you pull up to a light and you turn on Faisal. Oh, you pull up riding high. Everybody gets to Bob and they'd be like, ooh, I ain't heard that in a long time. There I you said, go. Well, there you go. I'm, well, the, I'm the same way. And yeah. um, it's such a good feeling for people to remember the, the you know you guys history uh, I'm playing your music and and I still see you guys performing on stage and ladies and gentlemen we're talking to Mr. Uh, Jerome Benton from Los Angeles California with the time and I mean <laughs> great history and just a, 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 a great musician and still and you know, doing what well, he does today and you know I'm I'm still having fun I haven't yeah. been I haven't been on the road for a few years, but you know I'm still having fun. Um, um, I've been blessed to be able to be part of a, a historical band, and um, as far as I know, we're not done. You know, my brother Terry and 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 Jimmy Jam. You know, they're continuously writing. I'm up under them all the time, watching and listening to them. You know, uh, put that stuff together for different artists and stuff, and you know in between grooves they hitting stuff that you know oh did you get that man did you put that over to the side just in case when you know when we release that next record and, you know there's there's always there's always going to be love and admiration for what we do well i was informed here recently that you're going to make a donation of one of the uniforms to the funk museum hall of fame and exhibition center that's going to be excellent to, to yes, for I'm, a, I'm gonna fix one i'm trying to figure out if i'm a so I'm going to give you the Janet Jackson Control uh, Grammy Award suit or if I go back and dig up one of those uh, touring show, uh, show uh, suits, you know, whatever. You know, I can't fit it no more anyways because it's too big. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> that's, the way to, that's the way to look at it. But we look forward to that because you guys have been so special uh, in the music business because you were such, you, you are such great performers and it was always, uh, I did a show one time at Dayton Hair Arena and I, when I say I did it, I emceed it. On that show was Prince, The Time, and Roger. And Roger opened up. And it was just phenomenal, man, to see all you musicians, you great musicians on stage. I was just in awe, man, to, to see you guys amazing. perform. I, I remember those days like it was maybe last week, right. and uh, um, that was a memorable time. And that was around the time where I just started making my appearance on stage and doing the choreography and singing and dancing. And um, it was a it was amazing, you know. Something so simple, something so simple has um, launched me into a thirty five year plus career and and now the, the ancillaries that are coming with it for me being able to write you know doing movies you know living in france with under the cherry moon with prince you know 
Prince has provided um, a vehicle for us to, to, to work with. And, and right now, you know, I'm in conversations with Morris that, that you know, we're, we're going to sit down and, and create this brand that um, we're going to um, capitalize on, on, on what we do. Right. On what we do. Well, you know, I wish you guys all the success and, and, and luck in the world in this business. And because you have such a, uh, a rich background in the music business, it should be just second nature for you guys to do moving forward what it is you do. Well, yeah, second nature sounds, sounds simple. It takes work. But, you know, the, the main thing is um, being the blessing of, of perseverance, <clears throat> the blessing of the wherewithal to have the committed um, presence um, and just knowing knowing what we want to do and paying attention and just being grateful for, for you know the fans in Ohio and Detroit Atlanta Los Angeles Minneapolis you know we've been blessed we've been blessed and um, it's a unique blessing it really is because everybody can't do what we do everybody can't carry a mirror that's right. We've got about a minute. Uh, Jerome, leave us with something special uh, about, you know, the Funk Museum and, 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 and you guys um, uh, before we go today. I think the Funk Museum, um, the, the erecting of the Funk Museum in, in Ohio is very important to the culture of, of music, um, funk music. Uh, let's not allow it to be diluted, to be mistaken or taken right and we know that that can that that last word taken has happened because it's happened uh so many times in the music business jerome thank you for being with us we've been talking to mr jerome benton with thank the you. time thank you for thank being on the fun chronicles man appreciate it and, and you know what i'm a fuss box but guess what i love y'all <laughs> hey and we love you too all thank right. you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the Funk Chronicles with Dr. Turk Logan, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.